Hey everybody, Anne here, and guess what? Looks like somebody's been shopping. But before we get into those details, let's talk about what I had to do to the van. And no, it wasn't catastrophic, and the cost of the repairs didn't break me. It all amounted to what I suspected initially, but didn't really know how to describe because, well, I'm not a mechanic. It was something to do with the air. <laughs> the battery ground wire was placed because it was completely chewed up by a rodent. From the looks of it, I am seriously surprised the battery worked at all. The mass airflow sensor, air filter and connector were all replaced. There was no filter in the van at all. The dude who had the vehicle before me had put in the wrong mass airflow sensor. Again, I just have no idea how this thing was running at all. There were a few more wires and another hose they put on as well as the manager fixing the gasket and the hose the day I brought it in and had my little meltdown because I'm just a girl and I don't know anything about mechanical stuff. But I'm going to learn. Most of the charges were labor. I need to learn to do this stuff myself and I will. Anyway on that note I went shopping about a few things that I knew I needed right away to get done quickly. First I bought black rubber mats for the bottom of the van once it's all completely cleaned and prepared to be covered. I have to plug up all the little holes remaining due to the bolts and brackets that have been removed. I already have plastic discs that lay flat onto the floor. You know you just place them in put silicone around the holes and whatnot to seal it up. I'll spray them with some of the stuff that prevents rust before I do any of that though. I bought two sheets of plywood that will go on top of the black mats. I may have to buy one more sheet depending on how the installation of the first two go. I spotted a large remnant of vinyl flooring that I thought might work. It's a 7 by 12 foot piece and I really like the color. It was a return without a price on it. So I asked the flooring manager at Lowe's how much it was but he didn't know. He looked around at the flooring inventory and found out that that particular flooring in the same size would have been 110 bucks but would give it to me for 50 bucks. Being the the cheap woman that I am. <laughs> I hesitated and said, well, I'll have to think about it. And he asked me what it would take for me to take it home with me. I told him 30 bucks. A said 35. I said deal. It's definitely worth it. Although I bought a couple different kinds of insulation already, I've decided that the bulk of the insulation that I'm going to use for the walls and the ceiling is going to be rock wool. This particular kind isn't supposed to absorb water and is not flammable. It really resists fire up to really high temperatures. Plus it's as easy as those rolls of pink fiberglass insulation. You you know when it can be molded, it can be cut and shoved into places without problems. I only bought one big bag of it but may need more. I'll still use Reflectix in certain areas as well. I'm going to make little window coverings and whatnot. They're going to be encased in black felt that's going to have Reflectix on the inside held in place with magnets. Anyhow, yesterday I got in there and got the rest of the yucky stuff out of the floor swept out. Now it just needs a good scrubbing. I'm going to be giving away a lot of my stuff in exchange for labor in the van. So hopefully things will start moving faster now. I would really love to be in the van before I have to pay my next month rent. I really, really don't want to have to pay for another month's rent. Not only because I'm running out of money, but because I despise the despicable little troll who owns this place. More on him later in another video. He's just so terrible. Anyway, let's go to my plans for the van. Granted, this is not at scale. I don't know how to draw stuff at scale. These are just tentative plans for placement. Okay, the little white arrows are pointing to the obvious, the two front seats. This area is going to be my kitchen area. It's in front of a window that I'm not going to cover up. And this window opens, so that's good. Over here, I want to put the cassette porta potty underneath and up top a hard surface where I can put my cooktop and use as a food preparation area. Here, I want to put the sink. I'll cut a hole in whatever surface is there and stick that down in there. And I want my water tanks here, both clean and gray water tanks. And over here, I want to put one of those little foot pump water pumps so I don't have to use electricity. And in this area as well, I want to put the propane tank, possibly. Okay, and then over here, I've got a little pantry already. It is handmade out of wood. It is just so cute. It's thin and it has a little closing door on the front of it. It'll work perfect for a pantry and I can even bolt it into the wall if need be. This here is where I want to put my clothing storage area, a soft wardrobe of some kind that I can close from the front or with a curtain or something. I don't want a hard one, uh, one where I can hang stuff up if I need to. It's not going to be very big. I'm not going to be bringing very many clothes. That's where I'm going to have my bed. This bed is not going to be this wide. It's not going to go completely over the wheel wells. I imagine that it's probably going to be about as wide as this. I may put one support over the wheel wells, but otherwise it's definitely not going to take up that much room. 
Over here is where the heater slash air conditioning unit is for the van. And so I have to build around that. Here's the two back doors, these two windows. I'm not going to cover them up. I mean, if I need to cover them for when I'm sleeping or parking or whatever, I'm going to make little coverlets for them. Here, I'm thinking of having the battery bank. I've got two batteries now. I'm probably going to get one more. They'll fit right into this area really nicely. There's also a little cubby there for the jack and the, the lug wrench. So I don't know if I'll actually keep them there or if I'll take them out and store them say like in the rear doors because there's little areas back there where I can stick stuff down there and whatnot okay this area is going to be it's gonna be a cabinet of some kind with storage oh and an, underneath the bed there's gonna be a ton of storage too but in this area some kind of cabinet slash desk slash workstation I like to mount the TV up there against the wall too with a swivel arm thingy to it. Over here, I've already got this dinette thingy. I don't know if it's gonna work though. I got it from like a secondhand store. It is like a little dinette. It's on wheels. I'd probably, of course, take the wheels out more than likely. And it has two little stools that stow up underneath of it. It's got two drawers. It's got a leaf that comes out to make it bigger. So I don't know. I don't know if that's gonna work or not. It may be too tall. We'll just have to wait and see. Whatever is gonna be here, it's probably gonna extend out beyond the left door as you're looking at the doors from the outside. The door still will be able to open but I'm probably going to use that space for something and then have the entryway only through the right door. Maybe if there's enough room and if it looks right I might get they've got these big well beanbag chairs and they look real, they are very comfy. I've sat in them and then get a little beanbag ottoman just kind of kick back kind of make like a little lounge area and then here in this area I'm not sure if it'll fit but I've got a big chest that is so cool and it's so old you can pull it around it's got handles on it and it's got wheels on one side so I may see if that'll fit back in there. I can store a ton of stuff in that so but it might be too deep to be able to fit in there. Also I can just put a cooler there if I need to you know because I haven't really decided what I'm going to do for refrigeration I'm probably going to just start with a cooler and put ice in it who knows all right, some measurements. The usable space after the van is finished with the walls and whatnot. I think it's going to be 62 inches wide. So that's how big my bed is going to be. Well, actually, you know what? The bed base is only 60 inches, but that's okay. Um, because the mattress can extend a um, couple inches beyond that on each side. So 62 inches I've got to play with this way. And then from wall to wall, the usable space is going to be about 66 inches. And that is up over over the top of the wheel well at the widest part of the van after it's been finished. I might be a couple inches off but I'm estimating that that's going to be about as wide as it's going to be at the widest part of the van. And then um, like I was saying about the bed it's 60 inches long it's 34 inches wide which is plenty and it's going to be probably 12 to 13 inches high off the ground so I can get plenty of storage underneath it there. And then over here from the ends of the wheel wells to the backs of the seats in front it is about 63 inches and floor to ceiling it's only 53 inches and that is after finishing so I mean I've taken off a couple inches to kind of account for what I'm going to be putting on the floor and then what I'm going to be putting on the roof to insulate and whatnot so that is the van and I know this looks kind of janky <laughs> it's just my my little dreams for what I want or what I'd hope for it to be if you all have any suggestions or if you see where maybe something might not work please feel free to leave comments below I'm just going to be doing things step by step the first thing is going to be the floor and then after that insulation and then the walls and then the ceiling so I've got plenty of time to kind of adjust and none of this is going to be super expensive I'm not going high tech or high price for any of this because I am likely to change my mind 50 million times before this project is over I don't want to spend a whole bunch of money if I'm just going to change things in a few months anyhow anything that I do is going to be easily removed. Just let me know in the comments below. I need all the advice I can get. And that's all I got for you guys today. If you liked hearing me ramble on and on and on about this stupid van I'm building, please hit the like button. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Either one doesn't matter. And subscribe and hit the bell. Yeah, hit that bell. And I will see you guys the next time. Y'all have a good one.